minutes. Yeah. Mark. <laughs> oh my heaven, she took a picture of us. <laughs> so modern standardized testing has been utilized since the late 1920s. So why do we take, take these tests? With a rising number of students applying to both community colleges and universities, most schools are now requiring that all applicants complete standardized tests. The most popular standardized test includes assessments such as the SAT or the ACT. In fact, according to Scholastic, American students today are among the most tested students in the world. Studies show that students all combined in the United States take nearly 100 million tests each year. Standardized testing is good for learning, but it does not show the individual and school's comp competency accurately. Many people need to test differently to accurate, accurately portray the information they know. I have chosen and researched this topic because I have struggled with te standardized testing in my life. Many might ask what the pros and cons of standardized testing are and if it accurately displays the student's ability and knowledge. So the pros of standardized testing is first, it is a metric for learning. So Brian Nixon in his article, article, The Pros and Cons of Standardized Testing says, when Whitby students are assessed through standardized testing, we gain a valuable metric we can use to check the quality of our curriculum. With exams created and given by an independent organization, standardized test scores are useful because they come from a neutral source and give us data that we can compare to other independent schools across the United States with other international schools across the globe. Second thing, it, it helps pinpoint areas for improvement. Nixon also says, when we receive standardized test data at Whitby, we use it to evaluate the effectiveness of our education program. We view standardized testing data as not only another set of data points to assess our student performance, but also as a means to help us reflect on our curriculum. We can also compare our students to their peers at other schools and determine what we're doing well within our educational continuum and where we need to invest more time and resources. So standardized testing gives teachers guidance to help them determine what to teach students and when to teach it. The net result is less wasted instructional time and a simplified way of time management. It gives parents a good idea of how their children are doing as compared to students across the country and locally. This can also indicate how your local area is doing compared against the national landscape. It also allows students' progress to be tracked over the years. When students take the same type of test yearly that is adjusted for the grade level they are in, it is easy to see if a student is improving losing ground academically or staying about the same. So some cons of standardized testing. So test scores can impact confidence. A big disadvantage of standardized testing is that it's easy to interpret student's score as a sole judgment of that student's ability. They are constantly emphasizing at Whitby that the number is only one point of data with an array of inter internal assessments across many subject areas that provide us with the information on a student's learning progress. There are many cases where students have demonstrated clear understanding within a subject or concept through various assessment, but aren't as skilled at taking multiple choice tests. Nevertheless, it can be hard on a student if they feel that they didn't perform as well as they'd like. There's also pressure to teach to the test. When standardized testing become all important in a school or district, it has a massive impact on teaching and learning. Educators fre frequently start teaching to the test. If they feel that their evaluation and jobs solely depend on how well students perform. Educators may also stop trying new techniques and teaching methods in the classroom. My mom has been a teacher for nearly 25 years and she's always stressed around the testing time because she knows that, she knows that her job depends on it on her student scores. She wants her students to do their best for their sake and her job's sake. Scores don't provide a true picture of a student's ability. Far too many people wrongly assume that standardized testing data provides a neutral authoritative assessment of a child's intellectual ability. Cultural factors with unfamiliar
familiar familiarity with testing methods, test anxiety and illness can wreak havoc with how well a student performs. For that reason, it is important to dig deeper when looking at a student's test scores. Does a low score indicate a lack of knowledge about the subject or a problem with, the, with taking the standardized test? For example, an excellent writer could struggle with picking out the right answer in a multiple choice grammar and punctuation test, yet the that same student could excel at composing well thought out logical essays about the literature, literature they read and enjoyed in class. So the history of standardized testing, um, the Room 241 team says, standardized tests has been around for a long time with a history of evaluating university prospects, job candidates, and other forms of aptitude, aptitude and intelligence. Starting in Imperial China, standardized testing used to be used in a rudimentary form to determine one's eligibility for positions in the government of the ruling class. In the early 20th century, Alfred Binet developed the standard Binet intelligence test, which is now the IQ test. Throughout World War I, the military used army mental tests to determine the best positions for new, rec new recruits. And in 1936, IBM developed a system of automating test scores by scanning bubble in answers. The SAT that we know today was first introduced in 1926 by the College Board. It contained 315 questions covering areas like vocabulary and math proficiency, fairly sim similar to what modern students have to do today. The No Child Left Behind Act and the Common Course state standards initiative passed in the last couple of decades are prominent examples of test-based accountability policies. So there are some arguments for and against standard testing practices. So some arguments against it is teaching to the test like we talked about. With so many writing, with so much writing on the results, teachers often feel compelled to teach the test. In some schools, less time is being spent on the sciences social studies, and the arts to prepare students to take the test in reading, math, and writing. Some ob observers have found that teaching informed, informed by the test focuses the curriculum on essential content and skills, eliminates activities that don't produce learning gains, and motivates teachers and students to exert more effort. So standardized tests feature multiple choice or open-ended questions. Some tests combine both. Because the answers are scored by machine, multiple choice generally have a high re real, real, yeah. open-ended questions ask students to write a short answer or an extended response. Critics say multiple choice tests are too slim, slim, simplistic, while advocates note that technology improves feature items that demand more critical thinking before choosing a response. Open-ended questions allow students to display knowledge and apply critical thinking skills, but most require human readers. So the question is, are there too many tests? Even though the public supports testing and accountability, many were worried that there is an excessive testing, burdening teachers and the students. In addition to the high stakes assessments, some districts are administering Benchmarks assessments <coughs> periodically to monitor the effect of instruction before the state tests are administered in the spring. In conclusion, standardized testing has been around since the 1920s, so it's not something new. It is very useful for many reasons, but it does not show everyone's, every individual and school's competency. I want everyone to think about standardized testing to know that someone's knowledge is not portrayed by these tests.